Joe Biden went on uh, Morning Joe this morning. Before he went on, essentially, it was all choreographed. You know, like Morning Joe tweets out, we're having Joe Biden on it, we're gonna be asking him about this sexual assault allegation. So right then and there, Joe Biden obviously got uh, who knows how many days of heads up. And I'm sure the negotiations, you know, to agree to go on Morning Joe, you know, the campaign said, we're, we're willing to touch X, Y, and Z. We're not willing to touch, you know, A, B, and C. So that's how this works. I could tell you because I worked at MSNBC and Fox. That's how it works. What's amazing about this is Biden basically went on, I guess, for cable news standards, Mika Scarborough, uh, Joe's wife, Mika Brzezinski. I don't, I don't know if she's still Brzezinski or Scarborough. Who knows? But... By cable news standards, it was kind of a tougher interview than I was expecting. But they basic the whole interview, and I'm not playing the whole interview, was essentially going by Joe Biden and his campaign's framing, which, by the way, if I was interviewing Joe Biden, I would say, Joe Biden, uh, what do you have to say that one of your top campaign people was essentially doing spin and PR for Harvey Weinstein? That would be Anita Dunn. Did she help you prep for this interview? I think that's a fair question. Who, who you surround yourself with says a lot about you, right? Not a question about Anita Dunn and Harvey Weinstein to Joe Biden. You know, Bernie Sanders was raked over the coals for t people who tweet, you know, but not Joe Biden. But to me, Miko Brzezinski did not ask the two most important things. I'm going to start with this. The first is no, about your it. University of Delaware records. Do you agree with the reporting that those records were supposed to be revealed to the public and then they were resealed for a longer period of time until after you leave, quote, public life? And if you agree with that, if that's what happened, why did that happen? Because, look, the fact is that there's a lot of things that of speeches I've made, positions I've taken, interviews that, that, that I did overseas with people, all of those things relating to my job. And the idea that they would all be made public in the fact while I was running for public office, they could be really taken out of context. The papers are position papers. They are documents that existed and, and uh, that, that when I, for example, when I go, when I met with Putin or when I met with whomever and all of that to be fodder in a campaign at mm -hmm. this time, I don't know of anybody who's done anything like that. And so the National Archives is the only place there would be anything having to do with personnel records. There are no personnel records in the Biden papers mm -hmm. at the university. Putting aside, to me, a, a very telling statement that why would I release information for people to vet my record? Putting that aside, because that was ridiculous on its own. Uh, he just said there are no personnel records at the University of Delaware. Okay then do they dispute this business insider story? Biden camp refuses to open up Senate papers that could shed light on accusers claim, but has sent operatives to look through the records. Wait a minute. The campaign of Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden has repeatedly insisted that journalists rigorously, rigorously vet the claims of former Biden staffer Tara Reid who alleges she was sexually harassed while working in Biden's Senate office and sexually assaulted by Biden in 93. But Biden is refusing to allow public access to his senatorial archives, even though they may contain records that could shed light on Reid's accusation. And as his campaign operatives have accessed the papers in the past year, Reid came forward on a podcast last month to detail her assault allegations against the former vice president. Since then, she has told multiple outlets, including Insider, that Biden pushed her up against the wall, reached under her skirt, and penetrated her with his, fi with his fingers in spring or summer of 1993. So earlier this week, Reed's former neighbor, Linda Lacoste, told Insider that Reed had discussed the assault allegations with her in the 90s. So, but one thing the Biden campaign is not encouraging journalists to do is check Biden's Senate archives for any records that could corroborate or undermine her accusations. The records, 
1,875 boxes remain sealed within the Special Collections Department at the University of Delaware, and the Biden campaign is ignoring calls to open them up. But the campaign itself is curious about what is in those boxes and has dispatched operatives on at least one occasion to search through them. Insider has learned. Andrea Boyle Tippett, a spokesperson for the University of Delaware, confirmed to Insider that people from the campaign have access to collections since Biden announced his presidential campaign in spring 2019. She added that the University of Delaware's library closed in mid-March because of the coronavirus, and no one from the Biden campaign has gone to the library since its closure. Well, I don't know. Call me a rookie journalist here. But if you're Mika Brzezinski, he's saying there's no personnel records at the University of Delaware. It's just old speeches I gave, transcripts of interviews, white papers, policy papers. Oh, University of Delaware just confirmed his campaign has been there looking through records. So what are they looking through? If Joe Biden is saying there's, not, there's no personnel matters there. Now, it, it could be true that his campaign went through records there and found that there are no personnel records there and learned they are instead at, at the National Archives or the Senate Archives, not at the University of Delaware. That could be true, but he wasn't asked about it. So because she didn't ask him about it, which is a very important point, she says she filed a complaint, not about sexual assault, but about sexual harassment. But if she filed a complaint, obviously his campaign is not just like going to University of Delaware on a whim. It would come from the top. Yeah, go look to see if there's anything about her there. Well, if they went there to see if there's anything about her or records there, then common sense would indicate Joe Biden knows there might be personnel records there. She didn't ask that, and that's important. Because I look at this not from the lens of me too. I look at this the same way I look at any journalistic story, and that is, where are the holes? Where does something not smell right? You know, it, you know Alyssa Milano, who is a major hypocrite and kind of has no, no soul, obviously, uh, penned a piece of paper, penned, penned an op-ed uh, that, you know, sexual assault allegations and sexual harassment, it's not always black and white, there's a lot of gray. She certainly wasn't talking like that when it was Brett Kavanaugh. But no, no, with journalism, yes, sometimes there's gray. But with most journalistic stories, if you poke hard enough, there is a lot of black and white. So to me, she's, Mika Brzezinski kept stressing the point about the University of Delaware um, archives. And Joe Biden keeps saying there's nothing to find there because there's no personnel records then why were your campaign operatives going through records there? And by the way, University of Delaware said nobody from the campaign has been here since March because of coronavirus. All right, but they didn't tell us when the last time was. People from Biden's campaign could have been there in January, could have been there in February, could have been there in early March. Tara Reid was starting to make her accusations, she went on with Katie Halper at the end of March. So it could have been on their radar, this woman's coming forward here. This woman's coming forward about a sexual assault allegation. So that is a major inconsistency that Mika Brzezinski did not ask about. Uh, I don't have any reason to believe the Business Insider report is wrong because Business Insider uh, had broken the story, I think two days before that, about Tara Reid's neighbor from the 1990s corroborating that Tara Reid, I believe in 1995, um, told the story and said she was assaulted by Biden. So two years after it allegedly happened. Now, to be clear, just because other people are corroborating her accusation or corroborating that she told them about it doesn't mean she's not making it up. I mean, you could tell a lot of people something that's not true. But with something where it is he said, she said, when you find consistencies, that is important. So Mika Brzezinski also did not 
mention or ask him about the fact that there are people, her neighbor, her brother, um, corroborating that she told this story, not recently, but when it happened or when it allegedly happened. So again, I see in the live chat, some people are saying, oh, Mika did a pretty good job. Yes, for cable news standards, it wasn't the softball we expected. But with something like this, you have to push them on inconsistencies. Vice President Biden, where is Business Insider getting that your campaign operatives went to search the records? And if they did go to search the records, why were they searching the records if you're saying there's no personnel matters in the University of Delaware? Lena, five bucks. Saw Tom Hartman earlier and he went through a list of why Tara is lying type stuff. Here we go. Honestly, I'm, not, I'm taking the political glass, my political lens off. So Joe Biden being awful and being a warmonger and a corporatist has nothing to do with this. I'm just looking at this straight. And that includes giving Biden the benefit of the doubt. But that is a major inconsistency. You would have to explain to me, why were your campaign operatives dispatched to the University of Delaware to look through boxes if there's no records, if you're right that there's no records there, there's no personnel records there? You can't just allow people like Joe Biden to just say things and just, well, we'll take it. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you could sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statusquo.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Oh, oh, oh.